Yeah, g'day, g'day, and this is Patris, and I'm down here at the Victorian Wild Trout Conference, organised by fisheries. We've got speakers here from all the way from Idaho, all the main managers in um, Fisheries Victoria. We're talking about trout, the population of trout, the health of trout, what we can do about it, what's going on. Let's have a look what's happening around here. We're talking to Travis Dallin, Chief Executive Officer of Victorian Fisheries. I've got one question for you, Travis. Mm -hmm. A comment was made that our trout uh, streams are in pretty good order. Yeah. Yet, we also heard five years ago there were all these people who were incensed up yeah. in arms in the Jamison area, yeah. saying the fishing's not as good. Yeah. Did they have a point? Were they misguided? No, what? they absolutely had a point. And fishing is very seasonal, as we know. Right. And we went through a really strong drought period. And what we saw was a lot of warm water up in those areas. Now, we've had some changes in some of the seasons over the last couple of years, which has brought a lot of the fish back naturally. They're starting to breed naturally. Right. But the other thing that we're doing, and the Australian Trout Foundation, people like Terry George is doing a lot of habitat work, a lot of planting of new trees, new shrubs put some stuff on the banks to make sure that water stays cool. So we're seeing a lot of these streams starting to recover and better fishing than we had five years ago. Right, so it was just that drought. Now, with that, with those trees we're planting, we're planting native trees, which take a long time to grow. Yeah. Realistically, till that reduces water temperature, are we talking like 20 years or something? Well, or? Well, the, well, the guys that are planting them are pretty clever and they're pretty smart, right? So they're planting some big old-growth trees that, oh, will, that, you know, that will be 30, 40, 50-year trees, but they're also planting shrubs, wattles, grevilleas and others that in the next 12 to 18 months will start to provide shade along those banks. So hopefully we're going to start seeing the improvement pretty quickly. All right, thanks, Travis. No worries, lovely to talk. <laughs> Excellent. We're talking here to Phil Weigel, expert fly fisherman. Well, uh, I don't know about that, but yes, go on. Well, if you're not an expert, there are no experts. <laughs> Do you think trout fishing has gotten worse, better, indifferent in the streams that we're discussing here today over the years? Um, I, fish, I, I can talk with authority because I fished them since 1968. And I think, by and large, they've got better. Um, when I was growing up, it was fill the car boot with fish um, and that was if it was if it was over 11 inches long that's what you did and then in 19 in the 1970s all regulations disappeared completely and it's only since about 1996 that they came back so people you know history there's more history to this than than people realize and the other thing when I was growing up if you wanted to log the side of a mountain out of Mansfield you just went ahead and did it there was no requirement to keep a protective margin along the streams. Um, environmental flows were unknown. Nobody knew what they were. Didn't, there's no such thing. Um, so I guess, you know, population pressure has increased, but a lot of other things have got better. So when you think about the good old days, often it's just selective memory at work. And we know the human mind has the capacity to remember good things over bad things. What? Why are those locals in Mansfield up in arms five years ago? Oh, of course, it was a tough patch. That's it. It was just a... Yeah, end and, of it was, the drought. and it was. It was. Right. The fish were still there, but uh, for various reasons, they were harder to catch than usual, and that's perfectly understandable. Um, and there weren't as many, and they weren't as easy to catch. Um, and, and then trout, as trout do... As soon as things got a bit better with water temperature, with fewer cormorants... They come back well, quick. They come back quick. Very... It's like, their specialty. Quick, quick is like... Like in a year. A year. Like, yeah. it's their specialty. Um, you know, you, you, the irony is, in a year like this, trout spawning mostly goes to waste. All those hundreds and thousands and millions of baby trout in the rivers, they're all going to be dead in a couple of months. Of course, they won't be able to compete with the existing populations. But that's okay because next time there's a fire or a drought or something goes wrong and there's only a handful of trout left, all those babies will have run of the stream. All the food, all the space, all the hidey holes, they're all available to those little fish 
and that's why you'll see on those graphs those incredible spikes yeah, after, they... after a bad year. They're designed to do that, whether it be in Idaho after a volcanic eruption or in Victoria after a wildfire or a drought, um, add water and they will come. Well, thanks They're really that, good Bill. at doing it. Enjoy the, enjoy the rest <laughs> of your lunch. Thank you very much and lovely tie. No worries, <laughs>now we are talking to Jim Fredericks all the way from Idaho USA and you're the chief of fisheries in Idaho is that correct that's correct I work for the Idaho Department of Fish and Game okay so maybe just sum up what's the state of fishing in Idaho what's your biggest challenge you face face there do you think um, there's a lot of different challenges right now some of the things that we're dealing with are uh, poor ocean survival of our salmon and steelhead stocks so even though we're uh, uh, 800 kilometers from the ocean, we still have salmon and steelhead. They're a very important part of our fishery in Idaho, and and it's been pretty tough on those species in recent years. So right now, that's kind of our biggest issue. So these salmon and steelhead, they live in your rivers. Do they breed in the oceans? No, vice versa. So they they spawn in Idaho, in central Idaho, upwards of almost uh, 1,500 kilometers from the ocean. And they live there for one or two years as juveniles, and then they migrate downstream to the ocean. Wow. Spend one or two years in the ocean and then come back to Idaho. And what's the problem? They're not surviving in the ocean. Uh, The ocean's been pretty bad. The productivity of the ocean's been bad. Uh, And then there's a series of of hydropower dams on the main stem river, which makes it more challenging. So there's just uh, a lot of factors that are going into that. And are you doing any fishing in Australia while you're here? You know what? I Unfortunately, I... I, uh, I, I had some airplane troubles. I was supposed to be here a couple of more days than I am. And so those are my fishing days, the days that I yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. here. So I'm coming back. I, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that I want to follow up on and, here. And dare I ask, is Donald Trump good or bad for fishing in the United States? Uh, let's just say it's a mixed bag. <laughs>